Hey, I'm Nick Gomez, and you're watching Creech Questions with Creech and Nick Gomez. Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's your man Vincent M. Ward, a.k.a. Oscar, from the number one show, The Walking Dead, third season, and you're listening to Creech Questions. Hey everybody out there, welcome back to Creech Questions. I am your host, CJ Creech, and we have an amazing episode for you here today. As usual in the background is Thea Irma and Louise with their song, East Virginia. You can check out the, more of their music at www.theirmalouise.ch. Unfortunately, Alyssa is unable to join us again. Right now, it's a crazy, crazy time for both of us. Today... We've got Vincent Ward and Nick Gomez, who are two of the prisoners from The Walking Dead Season 3, on the show. We've also got our Walking Dead wrap-up, where we review the very action-packed and intense episode, JSS. Now, normally we would do shout-outs at this point, but unfortunately, I don't really have any shout-outs for you today. I did just want to talk about something really quick uh, that I'm kind of excited to share. Um, I don't know if you have been on my personal page or anything like that, but earlier this year I said there would be some big changes coming to the podcast, and they are coming. Um, unfortunately, I can't really talk about what exactly they are yet, but there are two um, big changes coming. One of them, I can tell you, has to do with the podcast changing its name, so I guess that's technically three changes. But there's some very exciting changes coming. I'm very excited to be revealing them soon enough. But just know that these two things are, without a shadow of a doubt, the biggest and most earth-shattering news that I've ever, ever for Creature Creative or this podcast revealed and as soon as I can reveal it, I will. But just know that I'm hoping to be able to reveal at least one of them by the end of this month. Maybe at Walker Stalker Con Atlanta. I'm extremely honored and excited for what the future holds, especially with uh, Creature Creative and this podcast. Now, I know everybody's probably still recovering from this week's episode of The Walking Dead. So let's go ahead and get into that Walking Dead wrap-up. This is all connected. You show up. And now three of us are gone. Watch your friends. The episode is amazing. Uh, I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. However, the only gripe I have for this episode is I feel like, in some ways, this was almost a complete copy of the uh, the Terminus episode. I don't, I don't think it was a copy. I mean, you think about it this way. Rick and basically, if you want to call them the A gang... Um, they were all dealing with something else, like either A, being trapped in that car, or B, dealing with the herd. And then Carol comes to save the day, in disguise, in disguise no less. And her teammate, the other person that's there, uh, is an African-American male that doesn't want to kill people. And, uh... <laughs> makes that choice not to kill somebody. Yeah, I uh, I'm a little upset with Morgan. You know, did he kill did he kill the guy? The the main wolf guy that he had encountered before because I assumed that he did, but then I was watching Talking Dead and Kevin kind of said how he didn't know for sure. Do you guys think he killed him? No. I didn't I don't think Talking he Dead him. last night. Did they show the that wolf guy in the uh that the, the in memory segment. Oh yeah, the I, the rest in peace. I don't think yeah. so. Cause I don't think he killed him either. Uh uh-uh. uh I, really I think he's 
Yeah, I think she's tied up in Deanna's living room, and she's going to get a surprise when she goes home. That's if Carol doesn't happen upon him and wind up shooting him like the other guy. Yeah, really. Well, she's like, yeah, I'll take care of that, please. Let's hope she does, because, geez, he already let all those other ones get away, and that's, he's yeah. going to, I don't know, he's he's making some bad decisions. I mean, okay, yeah, I get it. You want to be all peaceful and not kill and blah, 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 but it's like, he's, it's either kill or be killed, you know? I don't understand how someone could take that stance. Like, unless it was like civilization was starting to become somewhat, you know, coming back in full force and you wanted to get back into society, but, like, it's not looking to go that way at any time soon. So I don't know why he thinks that he can get away without killing. I just don't, I think it's unrealistic. <laughs> yeah, I mean, to, to, at this point, he's a liability, big time, because he uh-huh. made so many mistakes. He's let so many people go. It's like those guys are going to come back, and they're going to be. It's going to be worse. And now they now they have uh-huh. at least one gun. Yeah. Yep. Well, it's I mean, the same thing. Like he couldn't, he couldn't kill his wife, and she ended up coming back and killing his son. And then he mm-hmm. didn't kill the two wolf guys when he had the chance, and they found Alexandria. And now he's letting these other guys go. Ah, and I just, those are gonna have dire consequences too, just like the other ones did. Yep. You know that they're not the only ones. I mean, they're gonna bring back up <laughs> next time. So uh-huh. he. Rick's going to have to deal with him in some way. Yeah. I, I, I hope Especially that since Judith was there. I mean, Judith and Rick's yeah. kids were there, and he's going to have a big problem with someone putting their lives at risk by not protecting them, which is what yeah. Morgan was doing. He's not protecting them. Uh, did y'all find it funny that Carl, like, took the casserole out of the oven whenever the timer dang? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Carol would have been really mad at him if it had burned. <laughs> I completely forgot about the casserole until the very end. Yeah. Until, until the alarm went off. I was like, oh, yeah. Yeah. I thought that was that was kind of a funny touch. It's like, oh, I better go ahead and get that since the timer went off. So, I know. But it did like, like blood everywhere, and he's like, oh, well, got to get this out of the oven. We still need to have dinner, guys. I don't know exactly. what everybody else is doing. <laughs> But it did give you, like, a time perspective. All of that happened within, like, an hour or so. Because she set yeah, the timer, yeah. and that's when she looked out the window, and here comes the guy slashing her neighbor across the street. Oh, oh my God. I still find myself just saying, oh, my God, wow. I Like, it's been, I watched it twice last night, and I still just think about it, and I'm like, what even just happened? I just, they just, like, punched me in the face is what I feel like they yeah. did. <laughs> yeah, it actually it actually shocked me when when they started attacking too, which is which I guess is is the show or is a sign of a really good show because uh we knew about the horn. We knew that was going to happen, but then we you know the the writing and everything that was happening in that first 20 minutes I, like personally I I kind of already forgot about the horn and I wasn't even like sitting there saying okay, the horn's going to come, the horn's going to come. And, you know, so I'm just enjoying what's happening. And then, you know, dude comes out of nowhere with a machete. And, just, and I was like, holy crap, what just happened? Yeah. Yeah, and but then they cut the commercial. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it almost made me jump. I was like, Jesus. Yeah. So I went ahead was... and post a picture of uh, Ron Burgundy from Anchorman because, I mean, like, <laughs> seriously, that, that escalated very quickly. <laughs> it did. Yeah, it did. To just and it's so crazy, like the forty five minutes because it just shows how fast like it can switch. Like in forty five minutes they went from peaceful, living, quiet, just going about their day and then now they have to like fight for their lives and people are being slaughtered, like mm-hmm. whoa. And that's yeah. not even the that's not even the beginning of it. you know, that's just a little little taste of their problems. Like they don't even know that all these walkers are now coming. Oh, geez. Yeah. Now they have the mega herd to deal with. I think Morgan was like uh, Jason Voorhees um, speed-wise. Because, you know, like in in the Friday the 13th movies or whatever, people are running away from him. And he's just walking and he catches up to them. I mean, Morgan couldn't... You know, they sent Morgan away, and then just a couple, like, not even minutes later, 
in the last episode was when the horn blared, but yet Morgan, like, yeah. booked it, apparently, and <laughs> wasn't was, was got there in time. I'm interested to see what delayed Rick and them next week so long since Morgan, you know, basically teleported over to Alexandria. Right. Yeah, I think they're going to get. I think they're going to get pinned down. I think they're going to have some trouble and they're going to get pinned down. They're going to get separated. Yeah, I don't know if the first inclination of for them was to run back home. I think I think they're trying to think of how to get these walkers off course towards mm-hmm. going in, to their home. I think cuz I think the preview they showed in Talking Dead it was kind of they were kind of having that plan like we got to, like, steer them off this path. I think that's probably their first plan of action rather than going straight home because I think, you know, he knows Morgan's going back. So mm-hmm. maybe he trusts him enough to think, well, he shouldn't have trusted him. I mean, he no. <laughs> he should have just thought, well, Carol's there, so everybody's everybody's fine. <laughs> right, Carol's there, Eric was there, Aaron was there, uh, Carl. I mean, so they had enough capable people it was just right. his first instinct was probably oh my god my kids are there yeah. yeah and can i can i also mention the the throwing in of holly like it, it what <sighs> even happened there what that happened was, right? that was the like biggest non-starter that I, i've seen on that show in forever it's I like know, that, that just completely crazy. threw everybody especially people who knew the comics for like a, a complete loop yeah, it's like, oh, okay, so how's that going to happen? You know, it, yeah, I didn't get that at all. I was a little mad about it's that. Like they, it's like they just wanted to mention it. It's like they wanted to bring it in, but they didn't want to, I don't know, like, were they just too lazy to do it? <laughs> she could have been a, a, Holly's a really good character in the yeah. comic, so I was kind I, of surprised that they didn't want to bring I her think- to fruition. I think they did it just to, to throw the comic readers off. It's like, let's mention Holly, and everybody's getting excited. Like, all right, Holly's going to show up. Holly's going to show up. And then you see her fighting for, like, a brief second. And you're like, okay, she's, she's, we've finally seen her now. This is, like, the first yeah. time we've actually seen her. And then you're like, ha, she's dead. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. Well, success on throwing comic people off, because I was like, are you kidding me? I yeah, know. That was yeah, they, like, they had mentioned her, and I just I found it kind of weird that we hadn't seen her yet. Like she's mm-hmm. there, like she's protecting people, but no one has. We have not seen her. How have we not come right. across her? But hey, you know Jesse didn't die, so there's that. Yeah, I'll just there you go. Yeah, I see. What I think happened was somehow they knew that we were going to talk about this months in advance, and when when Alyssa <laughs> Alyssa was was talking about how she was going to die, Jesse on the show was like, watch this. And yeah. she just shanked, she shanked lady. Seriously, she had some pent-up rage. <laughs> I was like, whoa. Girl went crazy with the scissors. Yeah, I um, that was very brutal. I wasn't expecting yeah. that. And I don't, if I recall, that didn't happen in the graphic novel either, but it was... Uh, oh. A welcome change, and it makes me hope that maybe they'll they'll stick a little less with the graphic novel, and Jesse will be with us for a long, long, long time. <laughs> maybe so. But what did you think of Denise's introduction? Uh, I don't know. I honestly, the only thing I gathered from her um, was for some reason I feel like they're, they're hinting at a relationship. Uh, between Eugene and Denise. Yeah, I got that too. That'd, that'd be kind of cute. <laughs> they're both really kind of awkward. So yeah, I mean, it would make for great TV, but it was, that's what that's what I got from from it. I really, I really felt for her. I felt really bad. Like she was just kind of thrown into this. Like you have to save these people. We are depending on you. Like. I like how she portrayed that emotion so well. Like, I'm seriously so nervous. Like, I'm going to throw mm-hmm. up. <laughs> that's exactly how I would feel. That's a, wow, that's a lot of pressure. Yeah, she did a really good job. I mean, I, I felt for her in that moment. Like, oh, yeah, how would, you, how would you react if you have basic medical training in here? Oh, yeah, by the way, you got to save this person now. And you're our doctor, so congrats, get started. 
Yeah, <laughs> like perform surgery right now, save her life. I'd be like, yeah. I don't even know. I'm going to cut her open and do what? I don't even know. Like, that'd be so, I'd be like, I'd probably kill her faster than, you know. <laughs> so I should probably not be near her. So, it'd be bad. Yeah. I would just be like Carol. I'd be like, oh, well, well, you know, I need to go burn her. Um, there's, no, there's no, there's no hope. I need to get rid of her now. Yeah, she's oh, like, let me take care of that for you. Oh, poor Holly yeah, let again. Me take, it's like, let me take her to the other room really quick and just, you know, shank her right there. And I'm like, oh, I'm sorry, she died and turned really fast. So, um, you know, I tried. <laughs> You know, Carol was a good executioner. She had the right idea. I mean, just coming up behind these people and just taking them out. Or, mm-hmm. you know, just running up being like, bam, bam, bye, I don't care. You know, no words from you guys. <sighs> yeah, she's she's awesome. I think that she would make quick, a, that's a great quick leader. thinking. Yeah, she would. Yeah. yeah. Like, I, I kind of want her to have her own community. I mean, she's just, she's, man, she's she's tough. Mhm. I wonder if her and I wonder if her and Rick could be together like how him and Andrea were in the comic. <laughs> Two strong characters joining forces. That'd be interesting. But no, I'm not going to ship that. <laughs> I was just <laughs> wondering. <laughs> yeah, I mean she's great. You think about it. She can she can keep the house and defend it and all kinds of stuff. I mean she's awesome. Who would want Carol and their team? Yeah. I stand behind her probably more than Rick because, you know, she's got the disguises down, and sometimes you you need to have that cleverness. Rick's kind of just, like, balls to the wall. He's like, we're going to do this. I'm going to kill you right now. I'm not even going to formulate any plans. I'm just going to do it. (laughs) Yeah. Carol is very meticulous. Yeah, she comes with a certain logic about her. Carol was like a, a master assassin, and Rick's yeah. kind of just like a, a crazed postal worker. <laughs> oh, that means I don't, I don't know. And can we get Carl? I mean, stepping it up. It was, it was nice to see him defending the community, and probably for the only time, actually staying in the house. <laughs> Amen to that. Oh, right. Oh, Carl. Yeah, I know when He's he came up. out to save when he came out to save Ron, I was like, Get back in the house, Judith is in there. Stop. Yeah. Do, do not leave the house. What about Enid? I mean, good lord, she's got terrible luck. I feel sorry oh. for that poor kid. She was pissed. I'm sorry for that turtle. You know, I talked a lot of crap about her, <laughs> and <laughs> I feel kind. Of, I feel kind of bad now, but still suspicious to me. She's just got these suspicious ways about her. But I like that they showed her story because, yeah, now it's kind of softened her up, and she doesn't look as suspicious. But yeah, I don't the thing with her parents. Her thing with her parents is, woo, that poor kid. I'm- I'm still I'm still pretty suspicious of her, to be honest. Oh, don't get me wrong. Yeah, I'm suspicious of her too, but I'm still like, okay, now there, I understand you a little bit. But there's there's some words that she said to Carl um, before she left that was kind of iffy. Was it the "they're just people" comment about? No, there was. There was one part where she was talking about what was going on, and I, it didn't sound like she was talking about the group. It sounded like she was – she said we, and it sounded like she was talking about the attackers, but including herself in them. Oh, I, don't, I, I know what part you're talking about. She was talk, When she was talking about the blind spots, right, like there's too many blind spots, Yeah. you know, this place is too big to protect, I think she was saying – I think she's talking about her and Carl. Like, that's how him mm-hmm. and her got out so often. I think that yeah. she's just reiterating on that point, that it's just too big to protect. It's how we got out, and it's how yeah. they're getting in type thing. And it could be, or maybe maybe I just have, in this whole Walking Dead universe, a severe distrust of kids. 
a teenager. Well, you played Mr. Bob that long. I mean, Chris on Fear the Walking Dead and Enid on The Walking Dead. Like, I just, I don't, I just don't trust any kids on there. I guess. I think poor Enid just has survivor guilt, so that's why she's just kind of disassociated herself with the people there. She just, she just feels guilty, you know? Why me? Why did she make it through and her family didn't? And you know. Where do we think it's headed next week? Hmm. I I think now that... we go ahead. <laughs> no, you go ahead. Oh, I just think it's going to be focused on what Rick and the others are doing. About I don't think this was our Alexandria episode it has happened there, and I think now we're going to be thrown to what all these ones are capable of. So you don't think we're at? We'll actually get to Alexandria the next episode. I don't think so. Yeah, I think they're going to steer that herd a little bit away from their home. And I think that they're going to get pinned down. I, I, I think Nicholas is going to bite it in the next one. I just have this feeling. Yeah. I, you know, when they had an Alexandrian run, a, a run around the corner, he was like in a blue plaid and he kind of had the same hair. As him, mm-hmm. and I thought, oh, my gosh, they killed him. And then I was like, oh, yeah, that's right. He's not at Alexandria. Mm, yeah. Sad. <laughs> Darn it. <laughs> oh, but, yeah, he might – he's going to have a hard time because, you know, this is the time he wanted to step up. And mm-hmm. he's really going to have to <laughs> legitimately step up now. Like, you can't back out now. You're in it. Yeah, plus uh, we know how well it works out for people when they have changes of, uh, of hearts in, in The Walking Dead. Yeah. Yeah, I think, I think he's going to get, you know, he's either going to sacrifice himself for the group or, you know, I think that's what's going to happen. I think he's just going to be like, hey, I'll distract him, and it doesn't work out for him. Yeah, that could be his ultimate um, showing Glenn that he – is remorseful much that could be his ultimate sacrifice so to speak yeah. poor yeah, Tenor totally <laughs> I know <laughs> I, he's so great no, I'd like to see more uh, granted it, it's kind of like a cheap plug within my, my podcast right now but Jordan's coming on again next week and honestly I'd like to see more of, of Eric um, because I mean, I think this this was probably the second episode, maybe third, yeah, third, that we've seen any sort of interaction between Aaron and Eric. They're my and, favorite couple. Yeah, like, I mean, they're they're barely in it. it it's been yeah. pretty shocking that they've been, that, that whole relationship's been, like, on a back burner. Yeah, they're, they're, I love them. They're my favorite couple, and they just haven't been in there at all. But did you notice in the when they were trying to save Holly, Eric was the one that was donating blood for her? I did. I noticed that. Well, I didn't notice that yeah. first until after the end, when when uh after she died, when he removed the the IV from his arm. Yeah, I was like, oh, he's like the ultimate nice guy. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah been, there's been a lot of characters that have been quiet. Hmm. Yeah. But, I mean, it is only, like, the second episode. I'm sure that they're going to, you know, give everybody more time as the season progresses. For sure. Oh, yeah. I mean, we're, even though, crazily enough, I mean, at Walker Stalker Con Atlanta will be the halfway mark, um, and episodes yeah. until the mid season finale. Yeah. It's wow. hard to believe. I know. We're we're, we're already twenty five percent through with this first part of the season. That's kinda of depressing. <laughs> yeah. It is. I just kinda of bummed myself out thinking about it. Well, I always look at it like I looked at it like this last night instead of looking at it like how you guys did just did. I'm like, okay, wow, this is crazy, and it's only episode two. I'm really yeah. terrified that of what they are going to do. I mean, like, I think this is like the most brutal they have gotten 
And they're mm-hmm. totally gearing up for you know who because this is the kind yeah. of brutality that his whole era in the comics brings. Yeah. And so they're yeah. really like showing people like this is just the start of it. You guys have no idea. It gets a lot worse than this. Yeah, I agree with you on that. It, it, this is, I mean, it's just episodes in. It's definitely probably the darkest season that they've done so far already. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I felt so bad for those Alexandrians because, you know, like, they, in a way they were so innocent. Like, it was so it was sad, like, when Carol was sitting on the porch with that woman that she was so lightheartedly talking about food and dishes that they were making. And then later in the day, you know, you're having yeah. to kill this woman. And it's sad because they were so innocent they had no idea. And they never even had a chance. And I think that's kind of why she broke, probably, when we saw her on the porch. She just thought, wow feel so bad for these people. But the one takeaway we can we can take away now is that at least Aaron doesn't have to uh get that pasta maker anymore. Yeah. I'm glad they threw that in there. That was that was priceless. <laughs> oh yeah. I don't think they're gonna be doing any more searching for anything here. <laughs> I mean, they're going to be on the run. Uh, they might be searching for a new home, I guess I should say, because oh, it doesn't, I don't know. I don't think Alexandria will be standing for very long. Well, that is going to do it for the Walking Dead wrap-up for this week. Like we uh, said in the wrap-up, we will do another one, obviously, next week to cover episode three, titled Thank You. Now, our first interview for this podcast is Nick Gomez, who you may remember on The Walking Dead as the prisoner that Rick killed with a machete, Tomas. He's also on the show Red Road with Jason Momoa now, and uh, he's been in a a bunch of movies recently, too, so definitely uh, excited to see what's in store for the future, and... (laughs) <laughs> enjoy listening not only to the interview but listening to him completely throw me for a loop uh when i ask him how the uh the event now the walker stalker con orlando has been going enjoy hello and welcome to cj's show yes thank you everybody this is uh Creech questions i'm here with nick gomez you may remember him as one of the uh well uh, Rick's uh, favorite prisoner to deal with. Totally. We're like best friends. I got a, a couple questions for you. Yes, sir. Um, first of all, how was it working on The Walking Dead? Uh, I've worked on a lot of TV shows. Walking Dead was definitely one of my favorites. I was a fan of the show before I did it. And I think one of the best parts about working on the show is that it's such a popular show. So it's like being on a winning football team. So everybody loves their fucking job. Like, everybody shows up, all the cast members, all the crew, they just love being there. So it was just a super positive vibe, and it was one of my best acting experiences to date. Awesome. And you've been acting uh, a lot recently. You're also on, is it Red Road with... Uh, Red Road, yeah. With Jason Momoa? Yeah. I, I just finished a movie in Bulgaria. Uh, I just got back from Bulgaria and Turkey. I did a, a movie with Billy Zane and Dennis Haysbert called Sniper Kill Shot, hence the haircut. They cut all my hair off. Uh, I'm also in another film called Domain that's coming out. I'm also in a TV show called Longmire that just got picked up on Netflix that's coming out uh, later this year, I think. Awesome. And uh, what are your official channels, if anybody wants to... to Uh, I have a a YouTube channel, Nick Gomez. um, Twitter, Nick S. Gomez. Facebook, Nick Gomez. I'm all over the place. But don't confuse me with the director, Nick Gomez, which Wikipedia does. Because on Wikipedia, it has my picture, but it also says that I was born in, like, 1958, and I'm 63 years old or something. Um, and I was born in Massachusetts, and none of that is true. So don't believe everything you read on the Internet. All right. And also, uh, we've been here now. It's day two of Walker Stalker Con Orlando. How has uh, how's the reaction been? How has it been here? Super boring. Nobody here is very interesting. And everybody is horrible. All right. Well, well, thank you again. No, I'm just kidding. It's great. Everybody's (laughs) awesome. I love these things. It's always one of my favorite parts is that I get to hang out with these guys, all my old cast members, and uh, it's fun. Everybody's great. Everybody dresses up. It's like the best people watching you can imagine. 
Definitely. And uh, if you are, are you going to be at any of the other ones? Atlanta. Okay. Yeah. So if you go to Atlanta, make sure you check out Nick Gomez. Check out his channels. And uh, just keep in touch. Ah. <laughs> Next up is Vincent M. Ward. Now, a little story, a backstory for this interview. Vincent was actually one of the first people I talked to about joining and doing an episode of the podcast, uh, Creech Questions. This was before I even shot anything. Um, I had arranged an interview with Moses, but even before I did the interview with Moses in 2014, I had Facebooked Vincent uh, and asked him, and for, for multiple reasons, he wanted to do it. But it just came down to timing, and it you know he didn't want to want to give a short interview and give something that that he didn't put his full heart into. So it was it was a waiting game on trying to to get the time to, together to to do the interview, uh, and we almost had it in Atlanta, but some of our other interviews ran later, and we were unable to get him in Walker Stalker Atlanta last year. But in Boston this year, we made it a priority, and we finally were able to get that that time available to do the interview with him. So, <laughs> I hope you enjoy this interview that took us over a year and a half worth of time to procure. Uh, Vincent's a great guy. He's got great Vincent M. Ward clothing, like Oscar socks and stuff like that. And he's got a lot of great movies out there that are coming up and that are out right now. Uh, so like he says in the interview, make sure you keep up with him at VincentMWard.com or follow him on Twitter at VincentMWard. Hey there, everybody. Welcome back to Creech Questions. I am here with Vincent Ward, who you may remember as Oscar from The Walking Dead. He's also starred in many amazing shows such as True Blood, Everybody Hates Chris, and you've been in movies too, like Ocean's Eleven. Ocean's Eleven, Traffic, Bringing Down a House. So he's had a varied <laughs> career already. <laughs> and uh, with, with that being said, what are some of your favorite personal highlights from working in the film industry? Yeah, just working. <laughs> <laughs> just working for the simple fact it's hard, man. This is probably one of the toughest industries to break into, you know, because nothing is promised. I don't care if you go to school or what, you still got to beat somebody out. You know, it's not what you know, it's who you know. Exactly. And um, now you've been in a lot of fan favorite TV shows, like we said with True Blood and The Walking Dead. Um, what is it getting to interact, or what is it like getting to interact with all the fans from all these different shows? For me, it's very humbling, man, considering where I came from and where I started, you know, in Ohio, back in Columbus, Ohio. Because I never thought about being an actor. I would say acting shows me. I didn't choose it. I went and saw a play for the first time in my life, and I sat there in that little theater and I said, I can do that. A few weeks later, they had um, auditions for that same play company. I went and auditioned, and I got a part. I just tell people, man, whatever you set your mind to, you can, if you're really serious about it and have a love and a passion for it, you can achieve it. Definitely, and if you've checked out his Facebook page, you can see that he is very passionate about it, and he posts, he posts so many uh, inspirational things that I think everybody out there Definitely loves to get to see. Um, I just like to let people know I'm, I'm no different from them. I just happen to be on some shows that people like. But, you know, anybody, anybody in this industry has the same problems as a guy working here, as a woman working there. You know, we cry, we hurt, we pray, we hope. You know, it's no different. We just happen to be on TV. But you never know what happens when that camera goes off and when people go home. I mean, for example, look at Robin Williams. I mean, legendary actor, comedian, on top of the world. And, you know, suicide. So you just never know. Every day you just got to try to stay positive. And that's why I would say rise and grind. And that's, that's more for, not just for me, but for everybody. Sometimes you just got to do something nice for somebody and let them know that you care. Exactly. And uh, as we were talking about, or we mentioned that you were on The Walking Dead a little bit earlier. And you played Oscar. Now you have a very passionate fan base on there. Um, how does it feel to have to play the character that not only has such a positive response, but a but a character that the fans want to see come back? Hopefully that'll happen. <laughs> <laughs> um, Oscar had a lot. I think Oscar had a lot to 
He had a lot more to go. You know, he could have stayed around a lot longer because he was loyal. You know, he knew his place. He could have been a leader, but he still knew his place, you know. Mm -hmm. Everybody can't be the captain. You need soldiers as well. And, you know, with him, he just wanted to get back to see his family. And, you know, I tell people all the time, just because a person is in prison or in jail, don't make them a bad person. They just have bad choices. And that's what my, that's what Oscar would happen with him. He made a bad choice, breaking and entering to try to, you know, have his, do for his family and got caught up. And what would you say was your favorite uh, memory working on set? Um, working with my man, Luke Temple. You know, me and Lou have become very good friends. You know, that's, I always call him my brother from another mother. And just taking relationships back from working there, like with uh, Lou, Temp uh, Lou Temple, uh, Travis Love, Irony. That's like some people that I, I talk to on a regular basis. All right. And uh, as you can see over here and over here, you've got your own uh, clothing and with the Rising Grind and the Oscar socks and everything. Mm -hmm. uh, if anybody else wants to buy these awesome uh, articles, where can they go to get it? www.vincentmward.com. All right. Him as a Mac and <laughs> <laughs> so make sure you definitely go on www.vincentmward.com and buy you a pair of Oscar socks and the Rise and Grind shirts. And uh, you got anything else coming up that they can check you out in? Man. Woo. Well, I'm actually up to uh, you know, keep our fingers crossed. I might be playing Suge Knight. And that's why I'm growing the beard and all that for the new Tupac movie. Um, I'm paying for a new show with John Singleton called Snowfall. Got the movie um, Lost in the Pacific coming out. That's the one I was shot in Malaysia. Mm -hmm. Live Evil with uh, Tony Todd and Vladimir Coolidge. About to start on a new zombie movie. Uh, this Lionsgate is behind it. Oh, wow. Lionsgate is behind it. It's called 2016. Got some plays coming up in Ohio. Uh, so stay busy, man. I hear that. Yeah. So basically, Vincent Ward's going to be coming to the big screen, little screen, and the theater screen near you for, I guess, the, the near future, which is always good. And I'm working on my own show, a travel show called Ball on a Budget. We all got a ball on a budget, man. We all like nice things, but you know, I like to have, like, I like nice things, but I still like to put some money in my pocket. I hear and that. I'll be spending all my money and we worrying about stuff, so... All right. Well, I do want to thank you again for joining About us. About time. I uh, know. Yes, sir. <laughs> Finally glad we could arrange that. Thank you. Thank you. Peace. All right, guys. Well, that is going to wrap it up for Creech Questions this week. Um, I hope you've enjoyed. I will reveal two other exciting facts right now. Uh, one, if you have already have, if you have Twitter, you already know one of them. But actually, right after recording and editing and posting this online i'm recording something for the podcast bromance of the year uh, i'm going to be on jordan woods robinson aka eric from the walking dead his podcast um tonight i'm recording it and it should be up this wednesday so make sure you check out his podcast sos studio because i'm going to be repping creech questions on there and it's gonna be it's gonna be a great time, guys, because Jordan has a great podcast that you should definitely listen to as well. And then speaking of that podcast, Bromance continuing next week, well, actually this Wednesday, we are recording with Jordan Woods Robinson, and he's gonna be our first ever three time guest on Creech Questions. We are extremely, extremely excited to have him back. We're going to be doing a lot of fun and original stuff. It looks like uh, me and Alyssa. It's going to be me and Alyssa interviewing him for this. And it's just going to be a great time. Jordan's always a great guest. And I love talking to him. Because, uh, like I said, he, he always has such articulate and uh, thorough answers. And I absolutely love it. So we're going to end it right here. Remember, check out Wednesday. Uh, Jordan's podcast, SOS Studio, and then check out Jordan on our podcast next Wednesday. Well, that's going to do it for us today. Hope you enjoyed, and we'll see you next time on Creech Questions.
Hey, y'all, this is New Town Breaking Town. Connie Moore. T Love. Is there a Jensen? Emma Bell. Pink Shed. Vince and Ward. Jeff Cobra. Does your father look at you? Danny Robot. Guys, Gilly Argenia. Master Carmen. Harold Parano. Daniel Thomas May. Ellen Moss. Sarah Wayne Kelly. Shadow Coleman. And Morgan May. Breaking Bad. Baseball Town. AMC's Comic Book Man. The Walking Dead. You're listening to Creech. Creech, 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 Creech,